Hi everyone, uh, uh, today we are going to discuss about uh, photo detectors for silicon photonics. What we will do, uh, uh, first we will discuss about uh, the working principle of uh, photodiode in general and then I will be discussing about waveguide photo detectors especially for silicon photonics applications for photonic integrated circuits with some examples. So, let me start with uh, working principle. So, as it name mentioned, name suggests photodiode that means a diode. So, basically when we talk about diode these days that is means uh, it is a semiconductor uh, PN junction diode and we have we know that uh, how it works. For example, a PN junction when it is fabricated as fabricated one side is p type doping another side is n type doping and then if suppose this is your metallurgical junction then uh, I think uh, uh, normally some of the majority carriers from the n site like electrons will move into the p site uh, p site and then it will actually recombine with uh, uh, some of the holes uh, and then it will create some kind of positive char immobile charge in the n site region and in a vice versa process there will be negative charge immobile charges in the uh, p site and that is how you can get a space charge region. So, where this is plus and this is minus so that is why electric field will be in this direction as it is mentioned. So, there will be a space charge field will be there and you must know that that uh, even though it is p type doping n type doping there are three holes are there and free electrons are there in the n site, but they are in principle neutral charge neutral, but only space charge region will be there electric field will be there. So, because of this electric field you know that uh, there will be some kind of potential uh, built in potential we have seen earlier and if you are giving a forward bias this depletion width will be reduced and electric field inside will be uh, uh, reduced as well. Similarly, if you are giving a uh, reverse bias that means, you are just connecting positive to the n side, negative to the uh, p side and then this depletion width will be widened. So, depletion will, will be widened and this electric field also will be increased. Okay. So, now uh, what it is done normal p n junction diode if you just see the working principle now symbolically sometimes it is represented like that p and n two terminal device like this actually whatever way I presented here and p side we can write like this and negative side this is symbolically it is written conventional current flow if you are just giving forward bias then current will be flowing but reverse bias normally no current will be flowing because in the reverse bias you you are actually enhancing this uh, built in potential electric field in the depletion region but in the forward direction this is actually reducing and that is how if you see the iv characteristics then you can see that in the forward direction in the beginning uh, when you are increasing your voltage the power will be uh, low because you are just overcoming the built in potential already uh, for a p-n junction and once you are very close to built in potential then your current will flow in the positive direction uh, exponentially and that current uh, equation we know that this is something like that we can express e to the power q v by k b t minus 1 where I 0 is the reverse saturation current V is the applied voltage. So, following that formula normally in the reverse direction actually you see very little amount of current will be flowing, but uh, up, uh, when the reverse bias voltage is sufficiently large then I think some breakdown process takes place a lot of carrier will be generated because of the energetic uh, carrier one or two carrier available in the uh, depletion region that will actually trigger to actually trigger for generating more electrons and a huge amount of current will flow that is actually sometimes called it is Jenner breakdown or avalanche um, process depending on the uh, different type of condition, but in general we know this is the characteristics and as we know that electronic circuits uh, normally when we use p n junction diode uh, basically uh, uh, it is used mostly for your uh, rectifier uh, purpose and also little bit of uh, this Jenner breakdown region also we used uh, for different applications. And you see that 
this reverse direction whatever the reverse direction when reverse bias is there the current is very small. So, that is the advantage you take uh, you use this diode as a uh, rectifier for electronic circuit. However, for for our uh, uh, photonics applications we use reverse bias biased PN junction for a photo detector operation. So, region of photodiode operations it is shown that means you have to apply some reverse bias and then you have to see that if any change is happening uh, in the reverse direction reverse direction current uh, if it is increasing if it is uh, uh, increasing depending on the uh, uh, light uh, falling onto it then we can say that how much current is increased in the reverse direction and that actually measures the light intensity okay normally without light in the dark condition if you see if you are giving certain bias voltage some current will be there and that level for silicon diode it is in the order of 20 microampere and for germanium it is about 50 microampere or so something like that so in micro ampere range and sometimes it can be if it is a good diode it can be nano ampere scale also okay and so how we use this reverse biased pn junction for photodiode application let us see so how we do here for example if you have a uh, if you are just illuminating under reverse bias condition when your uh, electric field is inside the depletion region will be enhanced depletion width will be widened and in that region if some light comes then what happens if the uh, photon energy of the incident light that is actually quantum of photon energy is h cut omega if that is actually greater than E g band gap then what happens the electron from the uh, balance band that will absorb one photon and can be excited into the conduction band. So, in the process what you will get you will be creating a electron hole pair a free electron in the conduction band and a hole left behind in the balance band. So, this electron and hole it is a excess carrier now in presence of uh, uh, light intensity. So, depending on the uh, light intensity your number of photons will be more. So, you can expect more number of electron hole pair will be generated here it is shown as an example 3 electron hole pair it is generated here electron and hole the empty circles representing hole and uh, uh, solid circle uh, that that is representing electron and what happens since in this depletion region there is a inbuilt electric field is there and that is enhanced by reverse bias what happens this field will actually try to separate this electron and hole in two different direction as you know electron negatively charged that will actually travel against the electric field and hole is a positive charge that will travel along the uh, electric field direction. So, they will be separated and hole will be coming to this side and finally, you will see that in the p side region you will get more hole is being coming out from the depletion region and since it is a uh, negatively charged this will be hole is positively charged and that will come out and you can say that it will be uh, reaching towards the negative terminal of the battery. Similarly, electron will come this direction and it will reach to the positive terminal of the things. So, in this way you can see a current flow in this direction. Okay. So, in this direction if it is current is flowing you can measure that current and depending on that current level uh, you can actually see what is the uh, power incident power light power. For example, this is a, this is shown the characteristics you see here this is the characteristics of the normal reverse direction no current forward direction it will be like that, but whenever you are illuminating that is increasing the light then you see this negative direction this current will be flowing more. So, reverse saturation current will be increasing that is actually current this is a negative current actually that means reverse direction. So, as you keep on increasing the um, light intensity so more uh, current will be flowing in the reverse direction. Okay. So, just looking into this increasing light uh, uh, increasing incremental current you can say that how much light is there you can just calibrate that and you can use that as a photo detector that is a, what is the major working principle actually. And 
you have to see you, uh, normally uh, a photodiode uh, whatever it is uh, schematically shown here, but normally uh, in textbook if you see the photodiode is represented like this. Okay. So, a diode and this is a positive terminal that is a p side, this is positive and this is a negative side that means n side and then you just give a um, uh, bias point there plus bias point you are giving there. So, that reverse bias here and when light is illuminated then current will be flowing and this current can be actually uh, if it is uh, flowing through a load resistance then this can be considered as a load resistance and you can see that current at the output whatever you take it here across this point that will be the uh, output as a voltage and that voltage should be proportional to the incidental power of the incident light because power of the incident light more is the power you will get more current photo uh, photodiode current that is what it is shown here and that means photodiode current is proportional to P L and this proportionality constant is here it is mentioned as a S we call it as a sensitivity or responsivity okay? because that depends on many things what is the area of the photodiode and what is the uh, absorption coefficients of the material you are using uh, particularly the uh, p n junction material. So, depending on that this S actually uh, is uh, value of the S can be decided. Okay. So, now let us see, let us try to find out what would be S that is proportional to P L when I say that ultimately this proportionality constant depends on many things as I mentioned that it is depending on the material property, area etcetera. If I just little bit look into it, for example, if you have a P L amount of power is coming that means this much joule per second power is coming. If it is 1 milliwatt suppose P L is equal to 1 milliwatt that means 1 joule per second energy is falling into the photo detector. So, that per second energy whatever per second energy you are getting if you divide by photon energy if you know the frequency photon energy then you can get number of photons per second falling onto the photo detector you can find. So, P L by H cut omega H cut omega is the photon energy P L by H cut omega is the number of photon energy. So, that means this is a number of photons. So, all these number of photons they will be if they are actually absorbed and create a electron hole pair then we can say that the each of these electron and hole they will be traveling in opposite direction to contribute current that means the number of electron that is actually started conducting current will be n times e. So, this is your number of electrons and electronic charge that actually per second this many charge this many number of this much charge will be flowing per second. So, that means this this actually represent this together represent by q by t that means charge divided by time that is actually current, but we use additional component called uh, factor like eta that means whatever the electron hole pair is generating generated because of the light falling on the uh, depletion region all of them may not contribute to your current. So, some of them will be lost some of them some photons may be lost also that is why we use a term called eta called quantum efficiency. That means, if you are you are having 100 uh, photons are falling if your 100 photons are falling in the photo detector may be 80 photons contributing to the electron hole pair and then 70 photons may be uh, contributing to the current then we can say that quantum efficiency is 70 percent. So, how many how much power you are how many photons you are just uh, falling and how many of them actually effectively contributing to the current that is called quantum efficiency. So, that is why current will be your uh, I p d if you just write I p d equal to eta times E and P L by H cut omega that is the thing. Now, again uh, earlier we have shown we have represented one we have introduced one parameter called sensitivity I p d will be equal to S times P L. So, if I compare this thing I p d and this one then S expression we can find out like this S equal to eta E by H cut omega. So, that is the sensitivity you know E is the electronic charge H cut is the uh, Planck constant 
reduced Planck constant omega is the frequency of the incident light that uh, they are actually constant. So, this eta basically the quantum efficiency that actually depends on your um, device geometry and material property. Okay. So, all these actually counts for your sensitivity of a photo detector. Okay. So, if first of all sensitivity of a photo detector depends on quantum efficiency and it depends on the frequency that means energy of the photons of course. Now, if you see that this sensitivity depends on the photon energy depends on the photon energy because the photon energy should be sufficient to create electron hole pair that should be actually greater than the band gap photon energy must be greater than the band gap. So, that means it is band gap dependent sensitivity is a band gap dependent. So, that means sensitivity is a material dependent different material will have a different band gap. So, it is a band gap dependent. Okay. So, if we see silicon sensitivity, silicon sensitivity as a function of wavelength it is shown like this. So, um, it is a uh, somewhere uh, in the visible region to 800 nanometer this curve it is showing. Gallium arsenide you see that is also it is narrower, but it is more or less falling something similar to silicon in gallium arsenide whatever the band gap is there if, if you compare indium gallium arsenide the band gap must be smaller for that that is why the emission here if you see that goes to longer wavelength range. So, all this depends on band gap and if you see the germanium that actually falls uh, that is a band gap the sensitivity is higher around say 1200 to 1600 you can say that from here to here you can use this one for very broad wavelength range, but if you are using in, in gas you can actually eventually can use visible region of near infrared region to 800 nanometer it is even broader. If you are working with a communication wavelength like around 1550 nanometer, so you have to either go for in gas uh, material for photodiode design or germanium, but remember that germanium has a sensitivity relatively smaller than uh, indium gallium arsenide. However, in spite of that people used to use germanium photo detector for silicon photonics application because uh, germanium is compatible CMOS compatible you can actually fabricate germanium photo detector using CMOS technology. However, indium gallium arsenide which is actually uh, 3 5 semiconductor compound semiconductors and uh, it is uh, not CMOS compatible. So, it is very difficult relatively difficult to integrate indium gallium arsenide photo detector in uh, your silicon photonic circuits. So, so far we have just uh, tried to give uh, a very uh, uh, basic concept of photo detector what is their principle, what is their working principle and how uh, what are the important parameters so far. You see this photo detector that is uh, it is a area is very uh, huge uh, area actually you can think of uh, photo detector all the figure of merits how you can reduce the figure of merits what is the speed and how how you can improve the um, efficiency and you how you can increase the output power all those type of things are very important but we will be discussing only those specific uh, figure of merits which is relevant for photonic integrated circuit applications and uh, what is the state of the uh, art technology till today so now, if you see uh, how we can just uh, find the figure of merit important characteristics of a photo detector. Okay. So, to understand that apart from that sensitivity and quantum efficiency these are actually material property ultimately you have to read out the current uh, from the current or voltage from the photo detector for uh, actual uh, processing for uh, when you are just thinking photo detector as a O E converter, O E converter, O E converter means it, it actually converts optical signal into electrical signal or in another word sometimes it can be considered as a uh, demodulator. If anything any data is encoded in optical signal you just detect that uh, optical signal through a photo detector then you can convert back into electrical signal and you can decode your data. So, that is why sometimes it is called also demodulator sometimes it is called as a opto electronic optical to electrical converter. Okay. So, to use that in a, a bigger circuit how, how its performance is and also 
what would what is its figure of merits like speed and uh, bandwidth etc. So, you need to actually uh, see uh, the uh, an equivalent circuit of a photodiode. If you check it carefully a photodiode when falling uh, when uh, you are making an incident a light wave incident on it then normally you can get a current flow in this direction. Whether it, it is a reverse biased or not you can see some, some kind of current is there. So, I can say that upon light incidence it is actually can be treated like a uh, current source. We have just represented here a photo detector here symbolically, but ultimately you have see you can see that actually this is actually showing as a current some certain direction it will be uh, sending current that current can be whatever small amount may be. Okay. And since you know this is your uh, junction diode and you are giving a reverse bias and when it is reverse bias this width will be increased and this thing actually uh, in the diode junction region as long as the depletion width is there you can think of that that can that for a AC signal you can see the space charge actually contributing a junction capacitance. So, we have shown that junction capacitance which is just shown as a variable because it can be uh, changed as a function of uh, voltage. Okay. So, as you uh, uh, increase the reverse bias voltage this width junction width depletion width will be increasing and when the junction width is increased this capacitance for this uh, the junction capacitance C j C j can be written as epsilon a by w. So, when W is increasing as a function of voltage by reverse bias voltage the capacitance will be dropping. So, that capacitance I have shown as a parallel to this diode. So, diode current, current source upon illumination under biased condition, under biased condition and illumination you get a certain current we just model this one like this capacitance for that bias condition like this and you can think of that ok if it is a diode you can see some kind of. Uh, specific conductance or shunt resistance you can apply that one across that I think normally it is intrinsic and a, for a ideal diode case the shunt resistance is must be very uh, high that means, uh, it, it is a conductive it should be highly conducting, but the photodiode is sending current. So, we will be considering uh, conducting and then we because once the current is flowing in this direction you can think of that some resistance will be uh, there in series in the contact from uh, P side to the negative terminal of the battery and uh, N side to the positive terminal of the battery that contact points etcetera everything that will give you some kind of series resistance you can consider that series resistance like this. And of course, if this series resistance this is actually the your diode uh, you can see the output and if you want to use this diode output to read out or give a feed uh, give a uh, input to a load that is called load resistance then you can just say that ok this is some load is there additional load is there typically that load can be 50 ohm and so on. So, in that case you can see ultimately it is a some kind of total R resistance R s plus R l R s plus R l and this capacitance. So, uh, if you try to find out that uh, if you try if you are interested to know how fast this photo detector can work actually that will be limited by this R c constant basically. So, if it is R c constant R c bandwidth will be typically 1 over 2 pi R s plus R l uh, times C j capacitance. So, by controlling the capacitance junction capacitance you can actually control the bandwidth lower is the junction capacitance you can have higher is the bandwidth lower is the series resistance you can have higher bandwidth. So, because series resistance once it is fabricated you cannot change the series resistance contact everything you cannot just change uh, that is actually fixed. So, what is in your hand is that uh, you can actively control that is the capacitance. So, this capacitance junction capacitance can be increased can be decreased by giving more reverse bias. So, higher the reverse bias then you can operate at a higher speed. Okay, higher the reverse bias you can operate at a higher speed, but you cannot operate a diode at higher reverse bias at your wheel because as you have seen earlier that higher uh, uh, point reverse bias you can end up with a uh, breakdown. 
So, you want to avoid this breakdown because you are interested to see how this reverse saturation current is increasing as a function of uh, light that is making incident on the photodiode. Okay. And apart from the RC bandwidth, so sometimes what happens? Uh, the RC bandwidth is like that. So, as we understand that if you increase W, this junction capacitance, if you want to increase that means you have to increase the VBI. So, in, ca in, case, in that case it will be uh, uh, breakdown voltage. So, sometimes what happens you can have a pin structure, pin photodiode. So, you can have a P type junction site and N site and you can have an intrinsic region. So, you can have here one field it will be created junction field, here will be created junction field and light will be falling. So, in that case this capacitance junction capacitance will be uh, lower for normally instead of p n junction if you have a p i n diode then this junction capacitance can be lower and once it is lower. So, you can have very high speed operation and when you are introducing certain length again one thing you should keep in mind that this carrier uh, from the generated by the photo illumination uh, that carrier how fast it can travel okay how fast it can travel from this junction region to the terminal point contact point so that also controls how fast you, your modulated signal can come in okay you can, how fast you can make your diode on off because of the light in intensity okay so that means your bandwidth also depends on the carrier mobility carrier velocity so, that is called uh, the bandwidth limitation by transit, transit bandwidth. This is actually RC bandwidth and this will be called transit bandwidth and transit bandwidth actually you can define by normally if your width, width of the depletion region is W that is shown here depletion region width and V is the velocity, the velocity is the lower value saturation uh, lower value saturation velocity between electrons and holes you know in this current both electrons and holes they are actually contributing uh, for your uh, photo current but in this derivations you will find that this uh, uh, transit bandwidth actually limited by the velocity which is lower com uh, if you compare saturation velocity of electrons and holes uh, uh, but electrons and whole saturation velocity will not be similar here you have to consider the velocity of which one is smaller that number you have to give. So, in that case normally if you just say that if is the width is a w and then w by v that means the saturation velocity that means transit time. So, this transit time uh, you do not need uh, whatever consider you uh, consider your transit time and inverse of that one V by W if you just take that can be considered as a frequency that inverse of transit time that can be considered as a frequency bandwidth. But here instead of just considering V by W you, you have to consider 0 0.45 uh, 0 0.45 in the sense because you know that this always is not that your electron hole pair is generating uh, at the junction region. It can be somewhere anywhere it will be created. So, if you just take the effect of electron hole pair generated in different position, different section of the uh, depletion regions and try to see their overall effect then it is uh, you will end up with uh, using 0.45 actually 45 percent of whatever the transit time uh, reverse inverse of the transit time that actually uh, controls the bandwidth. So, what I mean to say that the bandwidth of a uh, junction P n junction diode or P i n junction diode that uh, actually that is limited by uh, one is by R c constant and another is by because of the transit bandwidth which is actually uh, high which is actually uh, lower that is actually your uh, ultimate bandwidth will be the uh, of the photodiode. Okay. So, far so good now let us see that uh, what are the types of photodiode because you have to see first thing is that you have to see uh, what, what what could be the bandwidth what could be the bandwidth of the uh, photodiode how fast you can uh, operate because ultimately you want to use this photodiode as a demodulator that means your data stream when it is coming how fast data stream how how much gbps data you can actually resolve by your photo detector that depends on your on, your, on the bandwidth of the photo detector so to control the bandwidth normally uh, as i mentioned that instead of pn junction diode sometimes people use pin photodiode 
okay and sometimes the generated current may be not sufficient so what happens in that case we use a photo avalanche process where you can see that one you under reverse bias condition if you are if you want to detect a very low signal of uh, light say maybe one or two photons is just absorbed getting absorbed and electron hole pair is getting generated so once this electron hole pair is generated here and if you have a sufficiently large reverse bias voltage then this electrons when it uh, rush through with a saturation velocity v it uh, it will acquire sufficient high energy kinetic energy and that kinetic energy is good enough to knock additional electron from the core of the atoms then you can it will create one more electron so one electron will create two electrons now two electrons again will acquire energy and create four electrons and four electrons again acquire energy because of the high electric field here energy that will create eight electrons so in this way avalanche process you can get many more electrons uh, uh, generation it can start from one single photon single photon single electron hole pair and single electron hole pair that can actually accelerate and get energy and can cascade to generate more electron hole pairs and it, it, it will give you a huge amount of uh, electron hole pair in the uh, as it travel across the junction and then you can get a large amount of current. So, very weak uh, signal if you want to detect then you should go for this avalanche photodiode. However, you know this avalanche process actually contributes a lot of noises uh, uh, you, you may end up with signal to noise ratio drop. So, that you have to also take care and another type of photodiode also used that is called Schottky photodiode. So, Schottky photodiode is relatively fast uh, in operation because you want to reduce this transit time. To reduce the transit time sometimes it is better to instead of using p n junction at longer distance you can use a semiconductor metal junction short key uh, contact. So, that uh, any electron hole pair generated that can be quickly uh, that can be transferred to the contacts and uh, you can get a quick very quick current and you do not you are not limited by your so called transit bandwidth. So, in that case this short key photodiodes are uh, normally used. And, uh, uh, so, as I mentioned that we have discussed few of the figure merits. So, uh, if you just talk about that uh, overall performance of a photonic integrated circuit you have to think not only for only speed you have to think about the efficiency or sensitivity, speed, power handling, how much power it can handle. So, how much how many photons it can uh, incident at once and electron hole pair will be generated and the device will be protected it will not be burnt at all. So, that thing also you have to take care and then output power whenever you are just current is flowing here. So, if you have a load resistance here, so current uh, uh, current and voltage drop here whatever it is happening you just multiply you, uh, you are getting the output power basically. So, that output power if it is very low it may not be useful for certain application particularly for microwave photonic applications you need this uh, photo detected power should be uh, large enough. So, that you can actually get significant amount of RF power also. So, that is also another uh, big uh, figure of merits and of course, noise level as I mentioned that your process whenever you are making magnifications and also <coughs> making it high speed or maybe external magnification amplification you are doing. So, that will add a lot of noise. So, your signal to noise ratio can be dropped also. So, that is a another important figure of merits you should keep in mind. And then compatibility and footprint. Compatibility means I mean to say that uh, whenever you you are designing a certain uh, uh, photo detector which may be efficient, which may be highly sensitive, which may be high speed and which can handle very high power and uh, it can generate also very good output power that is uh, everything is fine. But it may not be compatible for uh, fabricating photonics devices along with this high speed photo detector and high performing photo detector using CMOS technology. So, that also you have to look into it and overall footprint how compact the photo diode because in a photonic integrated circuit you may have to integrate large number of photo, photo detectors may be hundreds. So, their footprint is also very important on chip footprint if it is compact then you can go for a large scale integration as well. So, all these figure of merits you have to just think whenever you are designing a uh, photo detector particularly for photonic integrated circuit and that is to silicon photonic platform. So, one important uh, 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 electronic circuit used uh, 
to uh, convert photo current into a voltage signal that is called actually trans impedance amplifier for signal conditioning you need for example whatever photo current is being used that photo current you have to uh, convert into a suitable uh, value in terms of voltage so that that can be a good input for uh, for the circuit driving circuit or so on so you need to uh, whatever signal you are detecting you have to condition it you have to get a, uh, you have to convert into voltage and you need a certain uh, voltage uh, height so that if it is a very small voltage it may not be useful you need to have certain kind of uh, voltage output so that thing is uh, called signal conditioning and that signal conditioning is done using a trans impedance amplifier so trans impedance imp amplifier which is uh, it, it is actually explained here with a very very simple example with uh, uh, operational amplifier uh, here in this case it's the simplest uh, explain uh, example of a trans impedance amplifier you can design much more complicated circuits there are a lot of um, literature is available how to design how to improve those type of thing but this is the simplest form to explain you that how signal can be conditioned uh, photo detected signal current signal can be conditioned into a uh, specific voltage signal with specific voltage peak to peak power up let us consider your optical signal it is a digital data it is kind of on off intensity modulation uh, intensity modulator modulation uh, on off signal that is how you have encoded intensity uh, using intensity modulator all the data comes so that and you you may want to use that for direct detection imdd for example intensity modulation direct detection method you want to use so for example here i have shown that is a one bit that means a pulse of his optical things that is counted as a one bit for example and if there is you know uh, high output optical power that means it is a zero and so on okay so when power is on that means light power is coming then your current will be flowing and then when off then uh, your current will not be flowing so that means your current the optical signal will be directly converting into electrical signal uh, just one to one manner okay so this this will be flowing a current and then this is a op amp circuit and this is a bias here and the op amp circuit if you are giving a positive feed, sorry negative feedback this is the uh, inverting uh, um, port and this is a non inverting port okay so positive feedback with a uh, uh, sorry again this is negative feedback you are giving for stability purpose you can add uh, a capacitance also in parallel with the uh, feedback resistance but this sometimes this capacitor even if you do not uh, add uh, in circuit you have to show it sometimes because sometimes this whenever you are using your feedback capacity feedback resistance the feedback resistance there can be some kind of parasitic capacitance uh, involved that capacitance you can consider as a CA okay and uh, uh, this uh, uh, non inverting port actually you can ground it or you can give a certain uh, reference voltage but this uh, reference voltage should be such that vb should be less than vr such that your photo detector is reverse biased basically so in this condition actually you can you are ensuring that your photo diode is a reverse biased and then what is happening in the output what you will be getting in the output some su suppose photodiode current is IPD and that is flowing through this that in that case the voltage here you will be seeing here whatever the voltage you will be seeing here that means with respect to V naught with respect to VR that actually is proportional to uh, current flowing uh, 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 multiplied by uh, the impedance equivalent impedance of RF and CF because current will be flowing whatever the current will be flowing no current no significant current goes into the up pump so all the current will be flowing in this direction here in this path so that means total voltage you will be seeing here with respect to here that will be this one ipd rf parallel to cf so that means this uh, <coughs> you can find out what is the value of rf parallel to cf and then if you just see that that will be actually frequency dependent because capacitance is there so capacitive impedance is frequency dependent so amplifier bandwidth can be again uh, it will be actually rc limited we will find 3 db bandwidth is the 2 pi rf cf so uh, you can in you can actually enhance you can actually enhance your uh, signal but whenever you are adding the uh, uh, so you can enhance means you can convert the uh, current into voltage and you can 
uh, use this voltage strength, uh, the amount of voltage strength you can amplify depending on the feedback resistance etcetera, but at the same time you are using additional electronics operation amplifier that may add certain kind of uh, noises and also that has certain kind of bandwidth any amplifier will have a bandwidth that will and additional bandwidth limitation will be coming also. However, uh, most of the time you cannot avoid you have to use this type of uh, circuitry because whatever the photo detected signal comes that is because of the reverse bias and you know reverse bias uh, current is very very weak in the range of micro watt and so on uh, unless and until you condition your signal you will not be effectively using them for different applications. Okay. So, uh, here it is a one example uh, of how this waveguide photo detector germanium is uh, integrated into silicon photonic waveguide for photo detector purpose. So, you see here is an example schematically shown this is your silicon uh, waveguide where light is coming for example, it can be carrying some data, it can be IMIDD data or any other coherent data uh, thing is there intensity modulated sorry this is not I m did intensity modulated direct detection it is coming and then on that uh, both side here you have a revive gate structure you can have a uh, intrinsic germanium you are depositing uh, directly onto the top of the silicon waveguide okay. and in the silicon this side is p plus doped and here this germanium in the top you can have a n plus doping and this side also p plus doping in silicon p plus doping both side and germanium in the top you have n plus doping and you have you are giving a uh, uh, contact here and these two thing you can just sort it. So, that you can give a uh, reverse bias here this is p side reverse bias here with respect to this one you are just giving a with respect to this one you are giving some bias right. So, this two is sorted and here you are giving bias. So, whenever light is propagating through this waveguide as it propagates you know germanium is also uh, refractive index is closer to silicon waveguide. So, the, your waveguide wave mode propagating here that will be disturbed that will be expanded that will be penetrated into this germanium layer and germanium layer you know any wave propagating at 15 50 nanometer which is transparent which is sorry lambda equal to 15 50 nanometer which is transparent in silicon, but that is not transparent in germanium. So, that would be absorbed and electron hole pair will be generated and that electron hole pair can be uh, can contribute to the current in the both terminal of the photo detector. So, some of the fabricated devices it is shown here and uh, the important part is that this is the first germanium photo detector integrated in silicon having a very high bandwidth in the, uh, in the order of 3 dB bandwidth in the order of 45 gigahertz and that is too possible with a footprint of such a small footprint 1.3 micron by 4 micrometer. So, length is 4 micrometer width is 1.3 micrometer that is the footprint and responsivity as good as like a normal silicon photo detector it is like a 0.8 ampere per watt 1 watt power going inside then you can get 0.8 ampere current. So, 1 milliwatt means you will be getting suppose instead of 1 watt if it is 1 milliwatt that means 0 0.00 uh, that means you can consider 0 0.8 milliampere. 0.8 milliampere for 1 milliwatt you will be getting 0.8 milliampere that means it is milliampere means 800 microampere or so and such a device also as a dark current is only 3 nanoampere. So, dark current is 3 nanoampere and whenever you are launch you are launching 1 milliwatt power you are getting 800 microampere uh, current. So, that means it is a very good sensitive uh, photo detector first time fabricated and uh, not only that not only it is a very good responsibility very low dark current very small footprint and it is also because its sensitivity is very high. So, it is just commented in this paper this paper if you just want to un learn a little more about this type of photo detector you just download this paper ultra compact 45 gigahertz CMOS compatible germanium waveguide photo diet with a low, low dark current. So, this paper you download it's a couple of pages are there and then you can understand how uh, nicely they have fabricated and they um, demonstrated for the first time uh, very high speed around uh, two, 2011 45 gigahertz. Uh, the first time CMOS compatible I mean to the CMOS compatible photo detector in uh, silicon photonics platform uh, that was it demonstrated yeah. 
And one important conclusion as I mentioned that the, this low intrinsic capacitance of this device may enable the elimination of the trans impedance amplifiers. As I mentioned earlier, you need to do some kind of signal conditioning once you detect your photo current, uh, you need to condition it so that you can use it effectively. But in this case, the sensitivity and the uh, uh, capacitance of this device is so, uh, um, uh, so, uh, so good. So, so they mention the low intrinsic capacitance. It is a very low. So, you are going for high speed and also responsibility is significantly high. So, you may not need actually trans impedance amplifier they, they commented. Some of the characteristics I would say that you see whatever the characteristics shown here the same device, same device, same group I have just taken from this paper. You see this is your 0 bias voltage, this is forward bias direction, this is your reverse bias direction. So, as you go for reverse bias your current this is in log scale it is shown here. So, current will be this much in the 10 to the minus 9 ampere in that range nano ampere range and whenever you are going for forward bias the current is increasing like this. Okay. So, this is again log scale, but when that that is that is when this this curve means that is actually IV characteristics when there is no illumination, when there is no uh, light launched into a silicon waveguide. But whenever you have certain light, then you see the uh, reverse the reverse saturation current is increased manifold. It is reached up to 10 to the power minus 4. That means, it is at least it is uh, more than 10 to the power 4 times uh, it is increased. However, in the forward direction, no current is being changed much. So, you just change see the, what is the current is increased and you can calibrate uh, to see that what is the power. Uh, uh, in the waveguide watch. Okay. And here also frequency dependent uh, uh, relative response it is shown as a function of frequency you see for lower frequency it is almost response response is almost constant. So, as you go for higher frequency it is dropping, but nevertheless if you see 3 dB bandwidth 3 dB bandwidth as they mentioned this is 45 gigahertz that is clear. Yeah. Then, uh, then very recently in two 2020 just last year and uh, uh, I think uh, Lee et al, I think this is a professor J T group from Southampton University, they actually uh, s showed that uh, they actually demonstrated a uh, very nice um, um, balance, I think they say that this is a balanced uh, photo detector, okay, photo detector and uh, also uh, integrated uh, T uh, trans impedance amplifier, trans impedance amplifier for detecting IMDD signal, IM intensity modulated direct detection signal purpose they have fabricated. So, in to, uh, 2020 uh, this uh, Southampton group they have demonstrated uh, waveguide de um, photo detectors using germanium photo detectors I would say and uh, they have demonstrated uh, kind of uh, so called balanced photo detector. So, whatever in optical input comes with a data you can split into uh, two part and one will be uh, integrated with a photo detector one identical photo detector two also this side. So, that uh, what you they are organized in such a fashion that uh, any data comes the current will be generated here positive current will be generated with one photo detector and another about is coming here that will be actually uh, giving a negative current generated here. So, this type of um, signal generation and if you detect and if you do some kind of differential uh, trans impedance amplifier. So, your um, non inverting input port is giving one positive current and inverting port you are giving uh, negative current and then you can also condition them with further uh, voltage amplifier and uh, it would be uh, very efficient and I just read out uh, as they commented in their paper which is actually very attractive to me, uh, I find it is very attractive. What they say that a silicon germanium balanced photo detector has been co-designed and packaged with a novel differential trans impedance amplifier trans impedance amplifier the TIA trans impedance amplifier design is realized with a standard 28 nanometer CMOS process very advanced CMOS technology they have used and operates with a standard digital supply of 1 volt. So, only 1 volt reverse bias would be sufficient uh, for detecting this uh, optical signals without using any equalizer or DSP digital signal processing technique additional things uh, uh, we, you, they did not use and without that even they could actually uh, recover uh, data 
uh, transmission up to 54 Gbps, 54 uh, gigabit per second data they could actually uh, detect with a bit error rate actually less than 10 to the power minus 4 or so something like that this is called KP4 limit. Okay. And also another important things which must be uh, noted that uh, while the power efficiency has been optimized to 0.55 picojoule per bit that means your data transmission as I as you mentioned that that it is very important that per bit data transmission how much power you are consuming for the entire circuit of in your receiver that is very important also. They say that its consumption is about 0.55 picojoule per bit. Okay. And uh, in fact, this is 0 0.98 picojoule per bit if your output buffer is included. So, if you have a buffer in the output, output circuit is there, then it would be even uh, little bit worse, little more power it will be consumed. So, here they have shown also some of the pictures. You see here, this is the uh, region where getting coupler and this this all the schematically shown things it is shown here and these are the balance photo detector, photo detector 1, photo detector, photo detector 1, photo detector 2 and then rest of the things is that all this uh, electronic circuit that means differential trans impedance amplifier that is actually uh, inbuilt here using 28 nanometer CMOS uh, circuitry and a little bit of it is a it is a the 1 millimeter by 0.5 millimeter area this one actually it is shown here right. And the, your this thing is that this photonics part actually it is 0 0.45 millimeter by 3.38 millimeters. Okay. So, with this I just close this uh, chapter as well as I want to close this uh, uh, course uh, integrated photonic devices and circuits and uh, yeah I hope uh, uh, in this course uh, I think uh, we have covered up to 40 lectures uh, till today and uh, starting from the very fundamental basic electromagnetics to the waveguide theory to the coupled mode equation and lot of passive devices, active devices and also we have discussed about how integrated photonic modulator can be uh, designed and how can be optimized the performance and then uh, we have also discussed how one can integrate uh, laser sources if possible silicon laser how to proceed, how to fabricate those type of silicon uh, lasers. Uh, by uh, considering hexagonal growth, hexagonal uh, crystallographic structure of silicon, uh, silicon germanium alloy, it has been shown that uh, the uh, it, it is a very 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 uh, prospective uh, for futuristic laser integration using CMOS technology. And today we have just discussed how uh, what is the state of the art technology for integrating um, germanium photo detector using CMOS technology uh, to the photonics. Uh, integrated circuits in silicon I mean to say silicon photonics technology platform. Thank you very much.